All right, so no camera. Oh. All right, so um, you know, really excited that we got a road win and a hard place to play, and uh, really good timing for a buy. Sometimes they come at bad time timing um, when you don't necessarily need them as much, but uh, we're playing with a lot of injured players that this will be very significant and hopefully will help if we can get them back, help us all over, but uh, especially defensively. So I thought that, um, you know, like I tell the players, you want things to go perfect, but when they don't, other good things happen. Like I told them right after the game, you know, I wish we would have closed it out on offense twice when we had the ball, um, you know, and made some first downs and ran the clock out, but we didn't. and. Um, you know, put our defense in a situation there to have to win the game for us, which they did. So that was great to see. And a very significant special teams play and a 60-yard punt that was able to milk some time off, too, that they didn't field. So <clears throat> very pleased. We've got a lot of work to do, a lot of improvement to do. But, you know, to be 8-1 and one at the bye, um, you know, with – you would have said at the beginning of the year with so many brand new players and the quarterback question and obviously you'd love to be 9-0 but um, you know we lost a lot of people from last year and there are a lot of questions coming in here with all the portal guys and how would they fit and all that so um, again we got a lot of work to do to improve but record wise that's that's pretty good considering those things. Lane if you will just kind of what, what is this week like for y'all, with it being an open date this late in the season and everything? What's the process like to try to get these guys healthy? Well, any open date, you still wanted to get some work done, um, maybe new schemes or things, but especially players that haven't played as much. Um, it's so late in the season, so you know there's more about getting guys healthy. There's more people that you got to do that work. If it's earlier in the year, you don't as much, and so um, – There'll be a lot of players very, you know, not in practice and in the training room and trying to get back because, um, and kind of like our common theme, unfortunately, every year, we're not rotating a lot on offense, especially in the skill or line, but especially skill, which, um, you know, has resulted in some huge play counts, whatever, 82 or something for Mingo, I think, the other, uh, the other day. So there's a lot of guys that need to get their bodies back. Just asking you to answer in general, but what, what is your gauge on recruiting and how these prospects have responded to you guys being eight and one at this point in the year, and as you mentioned, having to kind of you reload it as opposed to rebuilding? Yeah, I think whatever ten and two regular, so eighteen and three in regular season games over two years that they've been at a lot of them, they've seen them on TV. You know, that's a lot of wins and success, and that it. Usually, winning impacts recruiting, at least it used to a lot. Um, so I think that we've had very good reception from guys um, you know, that are interested in coming into a program that you know is winning and having a lot of fun doing that. Um, and hopefully they overlook some other things. Kind of putting a bow on this and forgot to ask you after the game Saturday, did you and Jimbo interact pregame uh, or meet or talk? I mean, how, has, how was that if y'all did? Uh, I mean, that was unusual. You know, I've, I've coached for a few years and, you know, always shake hands with the head coach before the game, like I was taught, but I stood out there for a while and, you know, he never came over, so I don't really know what the issue is. Um, the media guys were there um, doing the game, so they said, you know, don't feel bad. And, you know, he blew them off, you know, like the day before or something like that for their meeting, so uh, it is what it is. Um, so. Can't control other people. What does it say about your where your field is going right now? That a coach in your division, Brian Harson, was let go less than two years into his tenure today. Yeah, we were in meetings, so I actually didn't know that. So, um, you know, that's never. You know, when you when you've been through something like that, you know, you obviously have empathy for people, and um, it is what it is. A profession. I'm not complaining because. Fresh gets paid a lot of money and it's part of it. But, you know, when everybody roots for everybody to get fired and, oh, it's so great and everything, you know, 
it's not that person it's a ton of people besides his family and you know a lot especially because the staffs have increased now our kids are uprooted from schools and all those things so I understand why fans root for it I get it all but um, there's a very personal side to it uh, of a lot of a lot of adults kids that um, when something like that happens are going to be affected question from our readers here but <clears throat> you've got a, a group of young linebackers on this team that uh, they're not playing a lot and I guess it's because they're they're not ready yet but what have you seen out of them and what kind of promise do guys like Willis and those guys hold yeah some are playing on special teams and um, we do think that was a really good group signed um, you know and knew that there was you know some number issues coming up and so I think those guys will be really good players. It's a hard position to play right away, um, you know. So you know that, that it takes time. Quinshawn Junkins and uh, Nick Broker won some SEC awards this week. Uh, just just your thoughts on that and reaction. Or are you surprised? Uh, no. Um, so when you when you play well and you win games and you know statistics are really well in an area like running. You know, those are going to happen, but Q, um, you know, like I said, that was pretty cool on his 19th birthday, you know, to have 34 carries, you know, which our staff was all complaining about all the injuries, you know, by by them. But, you know, they had, they had nine defensive injuries that stopped the clock, that they stayed down for a very long time, as we all saw. You know, it's not like they, like, jumped right up so um, obviously that's usually frustrating for us as a tempo especially when eight of the nine return a number of them the next play after sitting out of play so um, I said hey guys let's look at the positive you know what they did and let Q rest you know so every time they had those injury timeouts Q got to rest and was able to carry the ball 34 times so <clears throat> you know I know it got some play about, you know, messing around with their DB and stuff, but, you know, that's the game's um, emotional. I was having fun with him uh, because he was another one of the amazing stories where he'd been out the play before and, you know, play was over and all of a sudden looks at the sidelines and he went down and then he's back the next play. So I'd been joking with him for a little bit there. But <clears throat> I'd, I have fun with that. You know, those kids like him, you know, have alpha personalities, five star, and um, you know, uh, we communicated after and laughed about it. So, Lane, we saw Zach Ave Evans make a, a really significant impact on that game Saturday night. It didn't look like he was 100 percent, but man, it, he was certainly going 100 uh, percent. Do you anticipate more and more of being able to integrate Zach? into that backfield with Q the rest of the way? Yeah, I think this week off would be a huge for Zach. Um, you know, I think a lot of that was adrenaline-based, where he was able to do that and didn't have a knee brace on, and then he felt it and then came out, put a knee brace back on, and you know, obviously he had the one run where he would have always scored on that, you know, where he fell down. Um, so you can tell he's not fully healthy, but he, he pushed through and you know, made some big plays. And I think that sideline run, running the guy over, um, which we just showed to the team, you know, was a lot for our sideline on a road game. And and also, you know, as we've mentioned with him before, there were some early in the year that weren't like that. And then, you know, that Vanderbilt, he seemed to change. Uh, kind of got the rare opportunity of the bye week ahead of the Alabama game. Just for you and your staff, when will you all kind of start looking at Alabama? I know you won't do anything on the field till next week, but when will you all start looking? And I guess will you watch that game Saturday night? You know, we'll start as soon as we leave here. Um, you know, we just met with the players, let them go. So we'll start on that ourselves um, with Alabama and uh, work on it all week. I know this has happened to you a lot over your career, but when your name comes up in jobs like this, do you address it with your team? Does it get? Does it come up when you talk to recruits, that kind of thing? I never do with the team, um, never have. Um, recruits, you deal with that all the time. Uh, I would guess any time that you've probably taken jobs, you know, and haven't been at one place forever, I bet every coach gets that. So um, I, I get that all the time 
from, from recruits that's just part of it and recruiting is competitive and you know that gets used against us and so we've been dealing with that for a long time so it would be nothing new. All right, guys, have a good week.